So God gave me this word a few weeks ago for encouragement to the Davids. The Davids are rising up in this hour and the Sauls are coming down. And so I'm going to give you 10 signs that you may be a David. Number one, you might be a David if the Pharisees of today, the Sadducees of today are always testing you the same way they tested Jesus or always holding your past against you. We see this with David, you know, from killing a man to taking his wife and getting her pregnant. David wasn't perfect, but he loved God. He had a past and oftentimes when you are a David, religious people will always look for ways to discredit you, even though God is indeed with you. Number two, you are unorthodox and can't be boxed into man's traditions. You don't fit in the, you know, orthodox Christianity. You don't fit in. When David was taking down Goliath, before he took down Goliath, what were the leaders telling him? They wanted him to put on this armor, which was a representation of man's system, the religious system, but it didn't work for him. All David needed was a slingshot and a rock. And oftentimes when you are a David, you see through the eyes of faith. You hear by faith and you you see through the eyes of faith. Religious people hate that and they can't see because they lean more on their logic and reasoning. And this leads me to the next point. Number three, because you are unorthodox, you are often accused of being rebellious or out of order. You know, people will tell you there's a better way to do that, daughter. There's a better way to do that, sister. And in so many words, the religious leaders were telling David, it's not wise to face a giant with no armor. That's not a wisdom. You, 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 need, you need to get wisdom on this. Not understanding that David was under the protection of the Lord. He didn't need man's protection. He didn't need man's strategies. He leaned on God and he knew that. He knew he was under the protection of the Lord. And so when you are a David, people will often tell you that you are rebellious. You know, you are unsubmissive. You know, you're out of order when really you just radical. You don't bow down, you know, to man's traditions and protocols. You bow down to God. Number four, you are often overlooked and experience a great deal of rejection, especially during your childhood. You are not everyone's pick. In fact, you were always the last pick. Maybe when you were in school during PE, when it came to picking teams or being in clubs, you were always the last pick. You know, you may have even struggled with fitting in and had friends that were favored by people, but you were never the people's pick. And it didn't matter what you do how you would do things to conform the man's ways, people ways you could never fit in. I actually remember a time when I played basketball my sophomore year in high school and I probably played about three times in that season. (laughs) And I don't think I was bad or anything. The thing was like, I didn't, I didn't play like everyone else. I was left-handed. I'm still left-handed. And I actually remember a few times when my coach put me in and you know, in basketball, you have to run these screens. And I remember I was at the three point line and another player on my team was, uh, the small forward. If you know what, if you know basketball, you know what I'm talking about, but I actually remember when um, the ball was passed to me and one of my friends that was, you know, up close to the three-point line, you know, where I was, she was like, you know, Jordan, you know, pass the ball. She wanted me to run the screen. I didn't really understand that. And so what I did, I got the ball, I dribbled, I looked, and true enough, one of the players who was in uh, playing small forward, she was open. I done a bounce pass to her and she made it. And everybody just, you know, was really, I guess, like in shock, you know, but it just didn't make sense to me to be running these screens and I'm seeing someone, you know, wide open. 
<laughs> and so I actually done that twice. And I think that's why my coach never put me in as much because I didn't, you know, go by the rules or whatever. But that was just something, you know, again, it worked. I was able, you know, to get us some points. And I do believe we ended up winning. And so when you are a David, you just don't think like everyone else. We know in scripture, when God sent Samuel to anoint the next king, David was the last option. Jesse had his favorites, you know, favorite sons before Samuel, and he left David in the backyard. And so again, when you are a David, you are not people's pick. Please believe you are handpicked by God and no man can stop the doors that God has for you, period. Number five is your confidence in God is often perceived to others as cocky or arrogant. When you spend time in the presence of God, you carry a level of confidence. I like to say Godfidence. You know, you carry this level of Godfidence that is unmatched. And to people who aren't confident in God or have weak faith, they will, you know, perceive you as just being arrogant and boastful. When that's really just not the case at all. You just love God and you just really believe God. Number six, you may be a David if you have a heart of courage. You are willing to step up and do what others aren't willing to do. You will say what God wants you to say. You know, you will go where God wants you to go with the quickness. You probably were the one that went against what was accepted in a crowd. You know, you wasn't afraid to confront bullies. You probably got into a lot of fights. I know I did. And even when you were younger, you probably experienced a lot of muzzling because your mouth always got you into trouble. Again, this is because you go against what's orthodox. And so, yeah, you have you have a heart of courage. You are just willing to do what others aren't willing to do. Number seven. People often feel intimidated around you. We know that David loved praise and worship. Scripture says in 2 Samuel chapter 6 that his wife despised him in her own heart. And so your expression, you know, of love and confidence in God will at times come off as offensive and people don't want to be around you because it exposes them. It exposes their hearts. Number eight. You are transparent and quick to repent when you mess up. When you mess up, when you sin, it grieves you. It grieves you. Like it takes you more time to move on from your own mess ups. When Nathan confronted David regarding his sin, he was quickly convicted and he humbled himself before God. And this is a thing that religious people hate and they can't understand why God uses you, but it's all because of your heart of repentance. David had a heart of repentance. Number nine, God has taken you through a series of tests to kill the fear of man. One of the ways David was trained in the wilderness was learning how to kill lions and bears. This prepared him by killing the fear of man. This trained him to not fear or seek to preserve his life, but to live boldly and fearfully for God. Similarly, You may have gone through seasons of tests where you've had to decide if you were going to cower down to the opinions, the fear of man. You know, this could be your family. This could be your friends. But understand this. When you are a David, God will constantly put you in positions where you have to make decisions and he's seeing if you will be obedient to him. He will even separate you from people so that you can learn to trust him on a greater level, trust in his provision, you know, and just not seek for ways to preserve your own life. And this is what David had learned, you know, learning how to kill lions and bears, like that in itself taught him not to preserve his own life. And number 10, you are a worshiper. You love music. You love music. You love praise and worship. You may have noticed some of your greatest breakthroughs always come through praise and worship. 
you may find that you enter the presence of God faster through praise and worship. You know, we see that David had a heart of a worshiper. We see this all throughout the Psalms. And so, yes, God is raising up his Davids in this hour. If any of these points resonate with you, let me know in the comments. Blessings. Thank you.